Welcome to Market Week in Review for the week ending December 20th, 2019. I'm Sophie Antal Joubert, and I'm joined today by our Director of Client Investment Strategies, Mark Eibel. Good morning, Mark. Hello. It's a pleasure to see you. Thank you. So we have another sort of quiet week in the markets this week, which most of the time is good news, except maybe when we're trying to tape Market Week in Review and talk about what's happened in the markets. So maybe you can give us a little bit of um, perspective on some of the bigger events that happened last week and how they've sort of filtered into market markets this week. I'm thinking trade um, announcements and also Brexit vote announcements. And then, of course, yesterday we had, or on Wednesday this week, we had impeachment. Um, so maybe you can share how have markets reacted to those events so far this week? Some of them seem to almost be the old saying, you know, buy on the rumor, sell on the news. There hasn't been a lot of selling on the news, but it's been buy on the, the rumor or buy on the announcement. And then the markets are just flat. We're getting a little bit of a rally as we record this on Thursday. But you're right, the week's been pretty calm. So uh, let's start with the big one. Let's start with, with, with impeachment. And the markets were very calm during the vote uh, on Wednesday. And today, you know, again, the markets are up the day after the announcement's out. And some people might be thinking, well, that doesn't, doesn't really make a lot of sense. I think you have to always remember, markets don't like uncertainty. I think we have certainty on this one. The House was pretty well known that the House was going to vote for uh, impeachment on the two articles. Uh, the market is very doubtful that the Senate will do the same thing. And so it, it knows what the outcome is. And you can look at history. Markets did not react very well around the Nixon impeachment. The markets rallied uh, when, when President Clinton was, was impeached. So you, can look, you don't even, can't even look at history and say, well, the markets always react this way or not. I think it's the fact that the market has a pretty good idea what the outcome will be. It isn't going to really change anything. Uh, and if there's no uncertainty, the market is just moving along on, on more fundamental or, or market-related information. Interesting. And then what about Brexit? Last week mm -hmm. they had the big vote in, in the United Kingdom about Brexit. How have markets sort of continued to trend this week in relation to that decision? Right. So the markets, big win by the Conservative Party and Prime, Prime Minister Johnson. Uh, the markets were, were relieved. It's OK. Now we're going we're gonna to move forward. We've got a, a voting block that, that probably won't be opposed very much. Uh, the British pound rallied a lot. European markets rallied. Well, with a very large majority comes uh, a feeling of power. And you saw a little bit of that this week where, well, what will Prime Minister Johnson do with that? Well, he he wants to be out in the end of January. He wants a deal or no deal to be done by the end of next year. So now the market is starting to think, well, are all options still on the table, including leaving without a deal, which is what the market has been the most kind of fearful about because it's such a majority. So it's almost one of these be careful what you wish for, right? So I think it's an example. Market ran up, got a got a indication that it thought was very bullish on and, and ran up on that and is now starting to process what that might mean based on some comments that he's made. Markets calm down, the pound sells off a little bit. So We'll have to wait and see. Uh, January deadline will come, but I, I don't think this is the last time we will be talking about Brexit and Brexit updates. Uh, I think we'll be talking about it throughout 2020 as well. Well, and one, one common theme throughout 2019, and I imagine will also persist into 2020, has been trade. Right. Anything to update there this week? Almost similar to, to Brexit. We got a, a phase one agreement. It hasn't been signed. I don't think it'll be signed until January. Uh, and the markets ran up on that, wanted some sort of, okay, here we go. We got we got uh, the, the uncertainty clarity. out of it. And all it does now is lead to the next conversation, which is, A, it's a rolling back of tariffs and China buying more goods, in particular agricultural goods. Does this almost put us right back to where we were before we started all the talk? So is it really a deal or is it just a, a, a go rolling back of, of what had been put on throughout the tariffs? It also starts lead the conversation. Well, what will phase two look like? So again, we get the deal, the market rallies on that, now starts processing what exactly does that deal look like, takes a little bit of that energy out of the market. So Brexit and trade, the two big issues that we've been talking about on how many market reviews throughout this year, we got some sort of resolution in a very short period of time to each other, now the market is processing and thinking ahead to what does this mean. So buy on the rumor, wait and pause uh, on the actual news. That's a really helpful perspective, Mark, on, on what sort of happened in the past two weeks. And mm -hmm. um, today is, is our last taping right. for this year. So I'm wondering if you could shed some light on when you look back on 2019, what were some of the highlights, maybe some of the lowlights right. for you, what stands out for you? And then also looking forward to 2020, what are going to be your key watch points right now? And obviously, we'll allow you to adjust those as we go along right. in 2020. But looking at it from here, 
here today, what would you say looking back at 2019 and ahead to 2020? I think it's hard to find lowlights as it relates to the market for 2019. I mean, virtually every asset class, if not every asset class, had positive returns. Equities across the globe, fixed income had very strong returns, uh, and real assets, whether it's real estate, commodities, or infrastructure, all very positive returns. So I think from a investor's perspective, whether you're conservative, balanced or aggressive, uh, you have to be pretty pleased with what your portfolio looks like, particularly remembering where we were at this time last year yes. with the markets going down in December. I don't think anybody saw this kind of return globally across asset classes in 2019. So I think it's an, another example of this is why you have a plan, right? So don't keep your plan, whether again, you're conservative, balanced or aggressive, just stick with that. And you were certainly rewarded for that in 2019. I think in 2020, uh, it's hard to say that we'll have the same kind of returns we had this year, a probably more muted environment. Uh, I still think there'll be opportunities, uh, whether it be in equities or fixed income. It might be more hitting singles when you get an opportunity in the market of taking advantage of that. Uh, there'll be some volatility along the way. We know, we talked a little bit about it. We'll have whether the Brexit deadline of January uh, comes and goes. What does that look like? We have Super Tuesday politically in the States in, in March, and we know that we've got an election uh, in November, there'll be volatility along the way. Um, if the manufacturing numbers outside of the U.S. continue to get a little bit better, which is what we've seen, still think that there's maybe more opportunities outside the U.S. than in the U.S., so stay with a globally diversified portfolio, but expect some more volatility and maybe some more muted returns along the way. Whatever the market brings, we'll be here every week and we'll, we'll talk about it as it unfolds. And comment on it. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for sharing your insights, My Mark, pleasure. this week and all the previous weeks My this pleasure. year. My pleasure. Have a nice holiday. As we mentioned, we will be off next week for the holidays. We wish you wonderful holidays and look forward to seeing you again in January in 2020. Hi, I'm Eric Ristovan, Chief Investment Strategist for Russell Investments. If you like what you saw in this video and want to see more like it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.